Good evening. evening. Grace and peace to you all in the name of the Creator, in the name of Jesus Christ, in the name of the Holy Spirit. So good to see all of you this evening in person as well as on our live stream on Facebook. Merry Christmas to everyone. Since we have some guests and visitors, I want to make some notes of things that might be helpful to know. Um, We have bathrooms here in the back corner should you need them. Um, Everybody, we have candles at both entrances. If you didn't get a candle, you can either stand up and go get it, or you can raise your hand and Don Jackson can get that to you. Um, Also at each table are um, bags of model magic clay and some coloring sheets and crayons. Um, So if you are a, a fidgety, busy type, who needs to keep your hands busy in order to stay engaged, um, or if you just enjoy creating, um, you are welcome, all ages, to go and grab those at any point in the worship service um, to stay present in this worship experience. Um, We also invite everyone to, of course, stay afterwards with us across the way um, for cookies and hot chocolate in the fellowship hall. Friends, let us prepare our hearts and minds for worship. Because so many swords have not yet been remade into plowshares, we pray for peace. Because grief and loss weigh so heavenly, 
heavily we break, pray for joy. Because hatred is still so strong, and because people all over the world are suffering, we pray for love. God has come to us as a child to dwell with us and to walk with us. May the light and the fire from these candles burn away. Whatever, Whatever we permit the God of hope and peace, joy and love, to be born among us. Friends, be not, be not afraid now. Even now, the light of Christ is illuminating the world. On earth as it already is in heaven. Please rise in body or in spirit and join in the opening hymn of Come All You Faithful, number 133. <laughs> You may be seated, and if any little ones want to come closer, you can, but I'm going to read a story for everybody to hear. I want you, can you see the pictures, Sophie? Here. I'll come over here. And y'all can just, I'll put the book in the fellowship hall, so if you want to see the details later, you can. This is The Birds of Bethlehem by Tommy DePaolo. Every morning, the birds of Bethlehem gathered in the field to glean any corn that might be left from the harvest. This winter morning was different. Anyone watching would have thought that they spent more time talking to one another than eating breakfast, and that was true. Yesterday afternoon, we saw something we'd never seen before said the green bird and his friend. We saw a long line of people coming over the hills. There's, y'all can't see this detail, but there's, there's somebody on a donkey and somebody walking with the donkey. The yellow bird and his friend spoke up. We saw something very unusual yesterday as well. The inn in town was full 
What we saw, said the bluebird and his friend, was very strange indeed. A man and his wife were led to the stable because there was no room left in the inn. We were roosting in a tree on the hill, said the red bird and his friend. Below us there were shepherds watching their sheep. We saw an extraordinary thing. An angel appeared in the sky and said, I bring you tidings of great joy. Go quickly to Bethlehem where you will find a baby lying in a manger. We were in the same tree, said the brown bird and his friend, and what we saw was spectacular. The night sky was filled with heavenly hosts singing glory to God in the highest and on earth peace to men and people of goodwill. What we saw, said the white bird and his friend, was an awesome sight, so we followed the shepherds. Let us go see this miraculous thing that has come to pass, all of the birds agreed. In the stable was a young mother and her husband and their newborn baby. The end. So that is just the story. We, we get many different tellings of the story of Jesus and sometimes we create our own stories. Um, and this is just a fun point of view from, from these birds that might have been around. So I invite everybody to listen tonight as many people in Trinity come together to tell different pieces of the story um, that are similar to this one. Will you all pray with me? Repeat after me. Dear God, thank you for the baby Jesus. Help us spread your love and light. Amen. first lesson is from Isaiah 9, verse 2 and verses 6 through 7. Listen for God's word by faith. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who lived in a land of deep darkness, on them light has shined. For a child has been born to us, a son given to us, authority rests upon his shoulders, and he is named Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. His authority shall grow continually, and there shall be endless peace for the throne of David and his kingdom. He will establish and uphold it with justice and with righteousness from this time onward and forevermore. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will do this.
Our second lesson comes from Isaiah 11, 1 through 9, the peaceful kingdom. A shoot shall come out from the stump of Jesse, and a branch shall grow out of his roots. The spirit of the Lord shall rest on him, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord. His delight shall be in the fear of the Lord. He shall not judge by what his eyes see or decide what his ears hear. But with righteousness he shall judge the poor and decide with equity for the meek of the earth. He shall strike the earth with the rod of his mouth and with the breath of his lips he shall kill the wicked. Righteousness shall be the belt around his waist and faithfulness the belt around his loins. The wolf shall live with the lamb. The leopard shall lie down with the kid the calf and the lion and the fatling together, and a little child shall lead them. The cow and the bear shall graze, their young shall lie down together, and the lion shall eat straw like the ox. The nursing child shall play over the hole of the asp, and the weaned child shall put its hand on the adder's den. They will not hurt, or destroy on all my holy mountain, for the earth will be full of the knowledge of the Lord as the waters cover the sea. Our third lesson is from Luke, chapter 1, verses 26 through 38, an angel visits Mary. In the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent by God to a town in Galilee called Nazareth to a virgin engaged to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David. The virgin's name was Mary, and he came to her and said, Greetings, favored one, the Lord is with you. But she was much perplexed by his words and pondered what sort of greeting this might be. The angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. And now you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you will name him Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High, and the Lord God will give to him the throne of his ancestor David. He will reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there will be no end." Mary said to the angel, How can this be, since I am a virgin? 
The angel said to her, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore the child to be born will be holy. He will be called Son of God. And now your relative Elizabeth, in her old age, has also conceived a son. And this is the sixth month for her who has said to be barren, for nothing will be impossible with God. Then Mary said, Here am I, the servant of the Lord. Let it be with me according to your word. Then the angel departed from her. An angel visits Joseph from the book of Matthew. Now the birth of Jesus the Messiah took place in this way. When his mother Mary had been engaged to Joseph, but before they had lived together, she was found to be with child with, from the Holy Spirit. Her husband Joseph, being a righteous man and unwilling to expose her to public disgrace, planned to dismiss her quietly, but just when he had resolved to do this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary as your wife, for the child conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will bear a son, and you are to name him Jesus, for he will save the people from their sins. All this took place to fulfill what had been spoken by God through the prophet. Look, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and they shall name him Emmanuel. Which means God is with us.
Fifth lesson comes from chapter Luke, the birth of Jesus. In those days, a decree went out from Emperor Augustus that all the world should be registered. This was the first registration and was taken while Quirinius was governor of Syria. All went to their own towns to be registered. Joseph also went from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea to the city of David called Bethlehem because he was descended from the house and family of David. He went to be registered with Mary to whom he was engaged and who was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for her to deliver her child and she gave birth to her firstborn son and wrapped him in bands of cloth and laid him in a manger because there was no place for them in the inn. Seventh lesson, I'm sorry, I skipped a page. The sixth lesson comes from the book of Luke. The shepherds hear the news. In that region there were shepherds living in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. Then an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for see, I am bringing you good news of great joy for all the people. To you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign for you. You will find a child wrapped in bands of cloth and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven, and on earth peace among those whom he favors. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, let us go now to Bethlehem and see this thing that has taken place, which the Lord has made known to us. So they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the child lying in the manger. When they saw this, they made known what had been told them about this child, and all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds told them. But Mary treasured all these words and pondered them in her heart. 
the shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen as it had been told them. The seventh lesson from the Gospel of John 1 through 14. The Word became flesh. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things came into being through Him, and without Him not one thing came into being. What has come into being in Him was life, and the life was the light of all people. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not overtake it. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify to the light, so that all might believe through him. He himself was not the light, but he came to testify to the light. The true light, which enlightens everyone, was coming into the world. He was in the world, and the world came into being through him, yet the world did not know him. He came to what was his own, and his own people did not accept him. But to all who received him, who believed in his name, he gave power to become children of God, who were born not of blood or of the will of the flesh or of the will of man, but of God. And the Word became flesh and lived among us, and we have seen his glory, the glory as of a Father's only Son, full of grace and truth.
Friends, please rise in body or in spirit. As in response to God's word, we together affirm our faith using the Apostles' Creed, which is printed in your bulletin. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He ascended into the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of God, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. be seated. Friends, in gratitude for the gift from God of Christ our Savior, let us this evening present our tithes and our offerings.
Let us pray. Emmanuel, in gratitude for the gift of your presence with and among us, we present these offerings to you. Accept and bless these gifts so that they may spread the joy of Christmas to others. Amen. You may be seated. Our communion liturgy tonight, as you can see in your bulletin, will be interspersed with verses from the hymn, Let All Mortal Flesh Keep Silence, which is actually, this is news to me, I learned this this week, is actually using the text of a second or third century Syriac communion liturgy. That is what that hymn actually originates as. Um, and so Elizabeth will, will prompt us with, with a chord, and then we will sing one verse at a time, as it is in your bulletin. Um, when in doubt, just, just fake it till you make it, and we'll get, it, get, to get done together. Um, all of our elements this evening are gluten-free, including this um, bread that our servers will have. However, if you need something a little more strict, we do have um, prepackaged gluten-free options as well on the table, which you are welcome to. Friends, tonight heaven and earth meet. Tonight a backyard shed is holy ground. Tonight strangers gather as family. And so we come here to the feast table of God as Christ's invited friends, chosen and beloved. If you have been here often, if the memory of this table stretches back through all of your Christmases, you are welcome here. If you have been here rarely, if reverence for bread and juice is strange to you, you are welcome. If you have much faith or little faith or wouldn't know where to begin, even if you wanted to believe, you are welcome here. For Christ does not hold himself back from us, but he boldly enters every heart. Christ welcomes you to this table that is all you need to know. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. We remember how shepherds and kings knelt before him, before he could form words of blessing or raise his hand to heal, how they adored him, not for what he'd done, but for who he was, God among us, a miracle to hold in your hands. Remember, too, Christ of the upper room, gathered with his friends, who seized a loaf of bread and a cup of wine as commonplace as anything and declared that they, too, were a miracle, a miracle to hold in your hands because they would be his signs for all eternity, bread for new life, new life rising out of the old, and wine for forgiveness, forgiveness unearned but complete. We remember with pain Christ's body broken and with wild joy his rising again and with faithful hope 
we await his return. Rank on rank the host of heaven spread its vanguard of the way as the light of life descended from the realms of endless day and the powers of hell vanish as the shadows Light of the world, we give thanks that you came among us with healing in your touch, compassion in your voice, and grace in your power. Darkness may seem so strong, but the slightest light disrupts it. Descend upon our world again, we pray. Vanquish the powers of evil, sorrow, and despair. Shine for those who grieve tonight, who are lost or lonely ill or empty, who dread the night and fear the morning. Shine in us, that we might shine for them, that all shadows would clear away, and we would meet each other in heaven's light and call each other beloved as you do us. Holy Spirit, presence of Christ in and among us, we praise you with our own alleluias. Rest yourself in these gifts of bread and cup that they may be sure signs of God's love for us, forgiveness and life abundant. Unite us with all the saints in every time and place, all those who loved you and all those you loved. Remind us that at this table, are those we miss so dearly tonight, those who are missing from our holiday tables, but ever present at your heavenly banquet. And most of all, unite us with Christ, the child of Bethlehem, that we might love as he loved so greatly that it changed the whole world. Alleluia, we sing tonight. Alleluia, Lord most high. And now we join together in the prayer Christ himself has taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Friends, tonight we celebrate Christ, the bread of heaven, who on the night before he was arrested for daring to love more boldly than others thought proper, took bread, and after giving thanks to God, he broke it, and he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And in the same way, he took the cup, saying, This cup is the new covenant sealed in my blood, shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this in remembrance of me. And so whenever we eat this bread, and we drink this cup, we too proclaim the boldness of God's love that will always come to us again. Friends, the feast is ready and all are welcome. I invite the servers to come forward.
Let us pray. Bread of heaven, let us not be unchanged by tonight. Let us not pass by the stable in silence. Let us not leave the table empty. Dwell in our hearts and shine in our lives that we might know your deep, deep peace and share it with the world. Fill us with your love that we might walk hand in hand with you all our days. We pray in the holy name of the Christ child born for us this night. Amen. This, then, is how love is born. Like a seed planted in the darkest of soils that rises to meet the sun's warming rays, so love emerges from the deepest places. Despite our willing it and without the force of hand, may love rise graciously to life. This, then, is how love is born. As the morning slowly dawns, first a sliver, then a burning horizon, causing the night to fade away. So love transforms our sorrow and fear. Into our need, moving against resistance, may love change things in our lives and in the world. This, then, is how love is born, as winter's gentle hibernation gives way to the bursting of spring and the delights of summer, so love is woven through every season. Amidst our doubts and disappointments, when the sands seem to shift under our feet, may love be steadfast and present at all times. We're now going to light our candles using the light of Christ. As um, our ushers bring the light to your row, I remind you to, um, to make sure the unlit candle is the one tipping over to the lit candle to avoid some messiness. Please join me in Silent Night, number 122, which is also printed in your bulletin.
Thanks be to God for this light of Christ. May we have the courage to go out and spread it this evening. Please join me, rising in body or in spirit, in our closing hymn, Joy to the World, number 134. Friends, receive this charge and blessing this evening. Tonight, in this community, we have shared stories, we have sung carols, and opened our hearts to the beauty of music. Tonight, we have turned to one another, lighting each other's candles in the dark. Tonight, we have dared to hear a message of hope spoken once again against the challenges of the world. It is now time to depart to go forward to our lives and to the world. So may the joy of Christ be your companion, whether you are with others or alone. May the love of God be your strength. And may the gift of the Holy Spirit's communi community and fellowship dwell in your heart. For here in this place, you will be welcome always, whenever you choose and whenever you need. Amen. Christmas, please go get some cookies. There are lots of cookies and hot chocolate waiting for you. Merry Christmas, y'all. <laughs> <laughs>